In the last lesson, we used Bernoulli's equation to work out the mean velocity of water in a pipe, and also the pressure of water in a pipe. The key to the method we were using in the last lesson is that we were assuming that there were no energy losses in the system. But in reality, we'll always have some loss of energy. If our pipe is small, like the example we considered in the last lesson, the losses may be small enough to be neglected, which is why the method worked. But as we make the pipe longer, the losses will soon become non-negligible and we'll need to account for them. And in the real world, we often need to build really long pipes. So we need to start to think about and understand the processes in real pipe flows that lead to energy losses. In this lesson we're going to look at what happens when water flows down a pipe in the real world and we're going to start by looking at the effects of friction and viscosity. When we assume no loss of energy, we're assuming something called an ideal fluid, which is a conceptualisation of a fluid that is experiencing no friction or viscosity. Imagine a pipe with a line of fluid particles across the pipe. If we have a flow with no friction or viscosity, all of these particles would travel down the pipe at the same velocity. So every fluid particle will be travelling at the mean velocity of the flow. So these particles here would all stay in a perfect line as they travel down the pipe. But if rather than drawing an idealised pipe, we consider a real pipe, and we inject some dye across this pipe, When we start a flow, we can clearly see that these particles do not all stay in a line and are clearly not all travelling at the same velocity. A few really interesting things are happening in this example, mainly due to the effects of friction and viscosity. So let's take a few moments to think about each of these processes in turn. Let's start by thinking about friction. If we look at the wall of my pipe, it looks pretty smooth, so we might assume that there'll be almost no friction in this pipe. But if we were able to look at this surface under a microscope, it would not look smooth at all. The wall would actually look more like this, with lots of bumps and discontinuities. And it's these jagged bumps that will cause friction between the pipe's wall and the fluid flowing through the pipe. If you imagine water particles travelling down this pipe, particles at the wall are going to get caught in these bumps. Just like when the valve is shut on the pipe, water doesn't move because the shut valve is offering a reaction force, exactly the same thing is happening at the wall of the pipe. These bumps at the pipe's wall are offering a reaction force to particles near the wall, As we can see in this example, if I inject dye into the pipe and start a flow, the dye almost appears to get stuck at the wall. This is because particles at the wall are being stopped in their tracks by these microscopic bumps. This means that the velocity of fluid right at the wall will actually be zero. In fluid dynamics, we call this the non-slip condition. So for real pipe flows, where we're considering friction, the velocity of fluid right at the pipe's wall will always be zero. If this was the only thing that was going on in the pipe, what we would have is water particles in the middle of the pipe travelling fast, and water particles right at the wall either stopped or travelling very slowly. We'd actually have two zones, a very slow zone right at the wall and a fast zone at any distance from the wall. But when we watch this video, we can clearly see that the reduction of velocity at the wall is translated quite far into the flow. It's not just the case that the velocity is zero at the wall and fast in the pipe's centre, there's a gradient in between the two. And this is due to the effects of viscosity. 
Viscosity is the internal friction inside a fluid. In the same way that there is friction between a solid surface and a layer of fluid, there is also friction between each layer of a fluid. So in the same way that water molecules almost appear to get stuck at the pipe's wall because of friction at the pipe's wall, water particles will also stick to each other under the fluid's internal friction between each particle. So it can be helpful to think of a fluid's viscosity as how sticky that fluid is. The more viscous the fluid, the more the internal friction, and therefore the more that particles of that fluid will stick to each other. Relatively speaking, water is not that viscous, but we can see the effect very clearly with a fluid with a high viscosity. In this example, we can clearly see the difference between two fluids, one with a low viscosity and one with a high viscosity. Although water doesn't seem to be that viscous, it certainly does have viscosity that is significant enough to have a major effect on the way that water particles flow through a pipe. The effect of viscosity is that because there is this internal friction between particles inside a fluid, particles are essentially sticking together under the force of this internal friction. So there is basically a link between the fluid particles across a pipe because of this internal friction. It's almost like there being an imaginary elastic band connecting particles across the flow. And what this means is the loss of momentum right at the wall due to friction will actually be translated into the main pipe as the friction between particles stuck at the wall and the particles in the main flow will also slow particles in the main flow. What we end up with is a distribution of velocities. Particles at the wall will have zero velocity. The particles at the centre line furthest away from the friction at the wall will travel at the flow's maximum velocity, which can be up to two times larger than the mean velocity. And then we have a distribution of velocities in between, as the effect of the friction at the wall is translated into the main flow because of viscosity. This is called a flow's velocity profile and the velocity profile tells us how the flow's velocities are distributed across the pipe. Under different flow conditions, we can get very different shapes to this profile, but most flows still have this basic idea of slow moving particles at the wall, fast moving particles at the centre line, and some kind of distribution in between those two extremes. If we now return to the example that we looked at at the start of this video, we now have a better idea of what is going on in this shot. We can see that die right at the wall is travelling with zero velocity due to friction, as this die is getting caught in the bumps and discontinuities at the pipe wall. The die in the middle of the pipe is travelling at the flow's maximum velocity, as it's furthest away from the effects of friction at the wall, and then we have a gradient in between, as the internal friction inside the fluid is translating the loss of momentum at the wall into the main pipe. So all real fluids will experience losses due to friction and viscosity, because the reaction force that friction and viscosity are offering to the fluid will push back against the total pressure head that's driving the flow. For slow moving flows, these are the main processes that are going to lead to losses. But as we increase the flow's velocity, something really interesting happens. We get a phenomenon called turbulence, and this turbulence is going to lead to even more losses. This really intriguing aspect of pipe flow is what we're going to be looking at in a lot more detail in the next video.